My lords, ladies and gentlemen, a very warm welcome back to Transport Fever 2. You join me today as we're sitting in downtown Long Eaton at the central bus exchange that we'd previously set up. And so far it appears to be working quite nicely. It proves fairly popular. It isn't overcrowded yet. That is obviously likely to change in the future, but as it stands right now it seems to be handling the incoming and outgoing passengers fairly effectively and efficiently. Before we get started proper with today's episode there is a little bit of catching up to do because I did attempt to record an episode a few days ago but unfortunately uh, had a power cut so I'd lost or the recording footage was corrupted and I couldn't do much to recover it and we had auto saved, or the game had auto saved during that aborted or that botched recording procedure. So what I'll do is I'll quickly go over the changes that were made prior to the auto save, uh, just to fill you in as to what was quote unquote missed during that botched uh, attempt, and then we'll just carry on from there. So there's been a few changes, nothing overly major, I dare say. The last thing we had done was set up this airport link from here into Epping and this is proving very very profitable indeed. We now have four aircraft running here and as we can see we do have a lot of passengers waiting to fly over to Epping and I'm fairly certain that's the same story in Epping as well. So that's the last thing we did together and obviously the extension of that was the central station in Long Eaton and a central station in Epping. What I did in the uh, failed attempt, the recording attempt, was a metro system that runs from Long Eaton to Epping, and this is the Long Eaton to Hearn Bay Metro. These are using the BE46 Mirage trams. As we can see, this is not profitable, nor is it very popular, but I don't mind that at all. It's not losing us millions upon millions of pounds per year so it's not too much of a concern and it does just give us an extra avenue and an extra string to our bow when it comes to transporting the people between Long Eaton and Epping. I highly doubt we'll ever see a lot of traffic on this route in terms of passenger volume. Again that's okay it's just nice to have an a second option an alternative method of transport between the two nearby cities and what we did or what I did is upgraded the road between the two included trams there's one of them now uh, tram lines and catenary and it just goes to the outskirts of Epping and uh, not Epping of Hearn Bay right here so it's just a uh, outskirt to outskirt link then when we got to Hearn Bay we did a similar setup with a central bus exchange in the middle of Hearn Bay and uh, we have the Hearn Bay Metro Link which is a point to point from the central station to the metro station and then we have the Hearn Bay Circuline which is the the pre-existing bus service in Hearn Bay. So again that seems to be working a-okay. Hearn Bay's public transport probably needs a rework at this time but that's not too urgent. Uh, the other thing I made a start of start on right at the end was this new bit of infrastructure right here. This is a commuter service and this is just city to city. So this one runs from Epping to Axbridge. With this we are using the Train 41. Uh, no we're not. We are using, let's just have a look at the name of this one. It is multi-unit the RABDE 1212 Mirage and again it's not proven overly popular or overly productive but not really concerned by that I just wanted to have some commuter services between each of the cities and that's what we're going to carry on with today so I made a start over in Hearn Bay and I've added this small platform here along the short edge of the station and I've made a start with the the outermost tracks here these are going to be our commuter tracks and the main line runs through the middle uninterrupted and 
for the large, uh, for the most part, unaffected. It does cross over at this point here to get access to the station, of course. And what we're going to do is we're going to run a point-to-point -point service from Hearn Bay into Axbridge and get a small train running on there. Again, if it's profitable, great. If it's popular, even better. If not, it isn't a problem. It's, it's not a. Uh, this is not. The, the future success of our company is not hinged upon this net uh, upon this expansion. You may also notice the mainline trains have changed. I have had to get rid of the mallards, unfortunately. Uh, sadly, time waits for no man. And now we have the class 47 BR Blue and the Einheits Vargans running on the mainline because these are faster. And we were just, it's just more productive to use these as opposed to the Mallard. So while it's a shame to see the steam trains depart our main line, we do of course still have steam trains on our rural line to the villages that we've been manually creating. And we could even think about having steam services on these commuter lines at least for the next 10 to 15 years before we bid farewell to them entirely. But all that to one side we now need to think about how we're going to put in an extra platform here at Axbridge for the commuter service in to Hearn Bay. As we can see this outermost platform is already utilised by the service from Epping. We can see one of the trains just arriving alongside now and I think what we're going to have to do because I think this platform here will be too short especially if we have a train of any sort of length so we may just have to add another platform or given that this service is not very popular and it's not very busy 12 people there we could just share this platform here with the service to Epping and I think that will be okay so for now that's what we'll do we'll just share services or share platforms with our existing Epping to Axbridge service and the way we're going to handle this is well we're going to have this come parallel roughly about here and then what we'll do is let's put a stretch of line just there and then we'll just cross over like that and then this will also carry on that way so we have a southbound and a northbound track and then obviously from this point to the platform this track is all shared bi-directionally so now it's just a simple case of connecting this to where we'd or to where I'd made a start upon departure from Hearn Bay which is not too far away so this should be relatively straightforward to connect in. We've already, uh, I already brought it over this bridge here and we can see where the track currently terminates. So it is just a nice straightforward case of connecting these two new lines together. We need to put some signals down on these new tracks of course on the outside which we'll do just now. These for the most part will be one way we may need a two-way signal by each station of course but I think this should be more than adequate and may as well put a couple of extra blocks on the main line while we're at this just trying to get these all nicely lined up there so where wherever there's an existing block on the main line we'll incorporate a block on the commuter line like this but what we do want to make sure is that we have a short block there that way hopefully the main line will take priority as it has slightly longer blocks so it enters this whole block earlier as I said we probably want to go ahead and put a two-way signal here like that and again just to make sure that our train should wait here if a main line train just happens to be passing through this little crossing point right here and we'll do the same up in Axbridge as well. Let's get some dwarf signals here in this tunnel. 
and once again we're just mirroring the existing blocks on the main line but then we're having a short signal there by the junction and then once again a bi-directional signal just there with a view to giving the main line trains the priority and let's just give this one more block just there yes that's very short in fact let's pull that one back a bit let's get rid of the one we just put down which is that one there and we'll have that block signal just there just to clear the back end if we need to okay so the infrastructure is set up the last thing we need to do is set up the commuter line itself so we are coming from Axbridge and we want to be on platform number three and we're coming down into Hearn Bay and you want to be on platform number one we have the 737 100 so we might want to upgrade our planes from the de Havilland Comets to the 737 100 uh, but yep, we'll look at that in a moment, just making sure this is using the correct lines, and it is indeed, it's straddling the main line, and then crossing over at the last minute to get onto its platform, and that's the same at either side. Wonderful, so that's working as intended. So let's call this the RP for rail passenger, and this is just the Axbridge Hearn Bay. We could call them commuter services if we wanted to. And this one also needs to be RP as well. So we've got RPM for the main line and RP for ah no, that's the that's the air, air route, isn't it? Actually, we don't need an RP. Let's put an A there. Uh, yeah, then we've just got RPM, RPL for the local service, and we could call it RP perhaps RPC for rail passenger commuter, but it's still distinguished enough from the main line that we, we're not going to get any sort of confusion or at least I hope we won't right let's get a train we do have this depot here on our passenger line so let's have a look at this one here we could go with the RABDE 1212 Mirage again 78 miles per hour but it is 2.2 uh, 2.2 million per unit to operate and if we just did that instead we'd have the same sort of speed in fact that's more capacity so that's all we'd need to match the capacity of 57 and exceed it somewhat and we'd still have a decent enough rate in there 78 miles an hour 76 on a high gradient it's not too bad especially for a slower local service let's just see if there's anything else that could be viable for this again I'm looking at the cheap things but it doesn't necessarily have to be cheap if it doesn't make us any money I'm not really that bothered uh, now the, yeah let's try these ones we don't have these on the network yet so let's buy two for now 24 million the line colour was, I think it was that pink. And if we head up here, we can assign them on this line. Wonderful. What we will do is just turn that to a double slip switch. Just so these new trains can get onto this line sooner rather than later. Because so I think as it stands, they would have to go all the way... Well, that's the only way they could get onto it, as far as I can see. And in fact, let's just make those double slip switches as well. Both of them won't be used during active service. But it might just make it easier for the trains to get access to that commuter line on the outer side of the main line. Don't, yeah, we don't need that one, but we'll use it anyway. Uh, yeah, okay, so that's all fine, in theory. So the next thing we want to do then is a similar service that runs from Long Eaton into Hearn Bay. So how would we tackle this? Because down here it's a lot messier than it is outside of either Epping, Axbridge or Hearn Bay. Because we have already some well-established and well-utilised routes in 
place. So, how would we tackle this then? This is going to take a little bit of thought. Um, I mean, they could... What do we have going off down here at the minute? Let's just do it this way. So we could share this line here. Then if it holds up the local service to those villagers, it's not the end of the world. And we could have it share all the way down here and then perhaps have it branch off here and then snap parallel to the main line. Both tracks run in to the right hand side of the main line as we're currently looking at it. And then coming all the way up here. And then how where, or where would we put our platform? Well, it would have to be on the outside here. So we'd be parallel, then we'd cross over the local line. Perhaps have it single tracked at this point into a new platform down here. I think that's what we'll have to do for this. So let's configure this station. Let's give them another track. Uh, do we want it full length? Well, it doesn't have to be. And sometimes it does look nice having different length platforms and tracks. So I might keep it as a short track like that. That's going to be more than long enough. And then let's put down some passenger platforms. Let's see here. Let's then give them an underpass there and there. And we also want a bit of roof in here. Why is that confused? Oh, is it because I was... Uh, yeah, sometimes it does that, doesn't it? There we go. Sometimes the trains, when they stop, they get confused when you're amending the station, even if it's nothing to do or it doesn't affect the track they're currently running on. But while it's here, we can just make sure it's going to use this double slip switch here to head. In fact, no, because that's that direction, isn't it? What we want it to do then is this is just for access purposes. What we want is something like, not like that. Just something like that to give it access straight uh, sooner rather than later. There we go. So there's no need for that to be a double slip switch or that to be a double slip switch at all. I was trying to guide them onto the wrong path there, which is not the best. But there we go, spotted and rectified just in time. So back to this then. Um, yes, so what did we say? We said we'd come out here. Let's go to about there for now. We did say we'd be running alongside the main line down here. So let's double track a little strip here so we, rem we can remember what we're trying to do and what the plan was. And then we want this to cross over like that. How does that look? It's not the best, but we might be able to just tidy that up a little. Like that. That's... Ah, now it's rubbish on that side. We might just have to balance this as best we can. I think that will have to do, because if we get it perfect one side, it's going to be rubbish on the other as we can see here. Hmm. And short of reworking this little stretch of track here, there's not much we can do to avoid that. So that might have to do. If it's too jarring, we can always, like I said, just rework this little bit of the local service here. But I think, for the most part, it should be okay. And then let's have this... Now, how do you want to tackle this? Do you want to come in before we cross over the local service line? Like this? E yes, because if we double track this, it's just going to increase the amount of ugliness we have on this overlap here. So let's do that. 
and then all of this from there to here will be single track bi-directional but that shouldn't be too much of a problem it's not going to interfere with the main line in any way and if these trains are a bit slow well it doesn't matter these ones aren't being uh, utilized for efficiency they're being utilized just for having them on the map and for no other purpose so so far so good we've not messed up that bridge at all that's still nice and tidy and then what did we say we said we were going to come in and we were going to join into here weren't we i think was the plan so let's just have a little stop it and think here so then let's see well first of all well, we've got plenty of uh, spare platforms here in Long Eaton, so it doesn't matter which platform we're using. Uh, we'll probably use this outer platform, because why not? Let's just have a look at this. So, da, 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 da. we want this to join into this line. This bit will be shared. Again, that's fine because it's not having any detrimental impact on the mainline services. So, it should, shouldn't be a problem. This is where we're probably going to have messy tracks because this one is falling away. I suppose what we could do is go down a little to come back up into there just to avoid that a little bit and yes it does mean this track falls away and then rises back up again but that's it's not it's not the end of the world that how does that look there yeah that's pretty hideous so we don't want to be doing that instead let's go from here and have this branch off and this is where we'll split into a a, uh, a double track system and connect in like that so let's just walk this through so we'll come down here we'll then share this track here share this track we'll cross over here this is all shared we'll come down here we're away from the main line at this point so no concerns there and then we're coming down and into this outer platform here on the way back we're coming this way this way this way up this third track here up here sharing 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 crossing over sharing straight on and then onto the double track there okay that should be uh, that should be okay in theory let's just uh, go ahead and see shall we so what do we want we want a two uh, uh yeah two-way signal there we should have blocking signals down here already and we do let's also have a two-way signal there that's not going to cause any sort of deadlock no and then i think we can get away with from this point on just going back to our one-way signals and put in the regular blocking signals between here and Hearn Bay. So let's do that. So we'll have a block there and there. And then like we did between Axbridge and Hearn Bay, we'll just marry up the existing signals on the main line with signals on this commuter service. I think we could probably afford one extra block down here on both both sets of tracks so we'll do that like so marry these up different signal styles but that's okay um let's put down one more block here and again this is on both sets of track let's marry up this block right here and now we want a one-way signal there and let's put a two-way signal just there 
Okay, so now we should be able to set this up. Does this line have a way to reach over? No, it doesn't. But we can give it one pretty comfortably by doing this. The speed of this crossover is immaterial. It's just used to get the trains onto the commuter service tracks. It's not used for access. Well, it is used for access, but it's not used for uh, a running service in any way. It's just to get the trains over there. Okay, so what have we used so far? We've used the rotor fail file. We've used the RABDE 1212 Mirage. Do we want no, that's a bit too slow? That isn't it? The rail bus, 56 miles per hour. What do we have here? We could run a class 37. Uh, the 1042 is pretty expensive. Uh, we could run the no hab 75 miles per hour. Class A4 is an option, but it just seems a bit too. Uh, a bit too prestigious for a commuter service in some way. So I think that may have to stay retired. The Scotsman is on the local service. Um, let's go for a class 37. And you shall pull. I suppose you'd pull that, wouldn't you? Something like that. How does that perform? Maybe even just that. That's not too bad. So that's 600,000 per year for the wagons. For the loco, it's 800,000. So we're coming in at under 2 mil. That's about 1 1.4, 1.5 million per year in maintenance to run this vehicle. So that's still coming in cheaper than the 1212 Mirage. So I think we'll use that. Yeah, what the heck, why not? So let's get two of those. Uh, we haven't got the line set up yet, actually, so we'll uh, just leave them stewing in the depot for a moment. And then we'll run a new line. And we're coming from Hearn Bay. We want to be on platform... Yes, platform five. And what colour? That's like a light, very pale lilac colour. And then we're coming down into Long Eaton. And we want you on this outer platform here, platform four. Yep, so you're doing the right thing there. Yep. Yep, then you're sharing up here, which is obviously as intended. Crossing over, and then you're diverging in your own separate way up here. And then you cross over there, and yep, that's all good. So RP, not just R, RP, Hearn Bay, Long Eaton. Okay, now we can assign the trains. Now we actually have the line up and running. Let's colour them in. So there was that one. Was it that soft pinky lilac? Or was it that one? I think it was more that one. And da, 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 can we see the line? Yes, we can. And out they come. Okay, so that's all the commuter services, or well, the point to point commuter services now taken care of, and they are up and running. How's this one performing for us? Yep, not very popular at this point. It might start to pick up a little bit, but we shall see. Likewise, this one will prove. Uh, will be a slow uptake which is again fine what about over here where's your counterpart a 41 of 60 and you're profitable that's not bad at all really yeah not bad not bad how do we see? there is a way to see how many people you've transported but i can't remember how we do that is it on the, the actual line statistics yeah, here we go. So, 122 in your first year, and so far in 1969, 118. So, yeah, there's a bit of pickup there. More generation than we have between Epping and Axbridge. Now, only eight. Sorry, only three. 
and our train is probably some way off. I don't know where the train is, it's somewhere on the line anyway. But yeah, these are doing okay and they might just hold their own. We'll have to give time for this new line from here to Long Eaton to bed in just to see how that's going to perform. But uh, yeah, if it does anything like the one between Axbridge and Herne Bay, we should be okay. And it is relatively cheap to run it. Uh, it was about 1.5 million. In fact, we can probably, uh, probably see how much it is to operate. Uh, 1.4 million per year to operate this one in terms of its maintenance. Probably won't be making that much money, but hey, that's fine. Sounds very sputtery. Ah, well. So yes, we'll leave that one to bed in and see how it does, but for now I think this is where we'll end it for today. So we'll have our customary cab ride outro and uh, where we're going to go from and to... Let's think. I think it may be a ride on the main line. If we have any train approaching either end of the main line. No, it doesn't look like it. Although I do think we have one on the way to Long Eaton that just departed Hearn Bay. Yeah, here we go. So I think what we'll do, we'll take a ride on the Lord Nelson here. But we'll allow it to get into long eat and get turned around and as it's departing that's when we'll hop on board and I think we'll treat ourselves to a ride all the way up to Epping uh, it does split the middle of the map so it'll give us a pretty nice view of the entire map or as much as we're going to be able to do apart from flying over it which we did last time out anyway so yeah that's what we'll do so I'll uh, pause the date here just accelerate it to four times speed just to get this train down into Long Eaton and heading out that little bit sooner and as we're departing we'll hop on board and have our little cab ride. Okay then folks here we go we are just pulling away from Long Eaton now heading for our first stop over in Herne Bay and there's a flying Scotsman on our local service looking very nice still indeed. So I hope you've enjoyed the episode uh, I apologize for the uh, the error that occurred as I was attempting to record the previous episode but hopefully uh, you don't feel like you missed out too much I think we've caught up on everything at the start of this episode so uh, I don't think there's anything else that was overlooked uh, like I said it wasn't anything major just a few tweaks well not a few tweaks but a few extra additions which uh, not really make or break they're just cosmetic and filler for the most part so yes, uh, I apologise for that, but as I said, hopefully you're feeling suitably briefed as to what was missed by now anyway. So then, ladies and gentlemen, for now, all that remains for me to say, as always, take very good care of yourselves. It's Tata for now.